This whole thing about love is not just in Christianity, but it's also emphasized in classical literature. And I, I want to ask this. How many when they were in school did Romeo and Juliet? Oh, I can see my colleagues here. Yeah. Oh yeah, those are very young. Now, I want to extract something for you that happened during the famous balcony scene of the play Romeo and Juliet. Romeo begins to pray his love for Juliet with these words. Now, I'd like to request every man listening to me, please let's read together the words in red. That's Shakespearean English for what? I'll swear by the moon that tips, you know, these guys were at the balcony, so there were some fruits out there. So when the light of the moon was flashing the trees, they were looking like silver. It's tipping. So this is a guy making a vow to a woman. Now, I want every lady to read what is in lead here. And I think Juliet was light because the moon keeps changing. Crescent, quarter, half. So if your love will be like the moon, oh, then things are thick. I don't want this kind of a love. I need something like the sun. Something that does not keep changing the shape. I can't predict the shape of the moon. That's what Juliet is saying. Me think she's right. Do you think so? There is nothing mercurial about love. It is not based on whims, feelings, or passing fancies. Love is rock solid intent or benefiting. I want us to look love at God's perspective and I close the meeting. What does it really mean that love never fails? Which is the theme of our meeting tonight. What does it really mean love never fails? If we can define love from God's perspective, I can call it a day. And I, and I want us to read together. I will give you some 14 definitions. The first one, let's read together. Love is patient. That means you can wait for the others. You don't just look at your own clock. You also look at your spouse's clock. Number two, love is, love is kind. If you're loving, you can open the car door for her. You can carry that bag. Let me tell you what we do in our house. I don't like shopping. It's one of the things that can make me admitted to ICU. <laughs> so what do I do? When our daughter was young, I used to carry her on, uh, what do you call them, trolleys. When she got older, she became more difficult for me than the mother in terms of shopping. Because the mother would take about an hour. This girl can take three hours. <laughs> smelling things in the supermarket. <laughs> Remember, this thing can make me sick. So I negotiated with them and I said, can I be waiting for you at the coffee shop with my son as you do the, the shopping? And they agreed. Now I have been unable even to wait for them in the coffee shop. <laughs> the list has been growing by the day. So what do I do? When they come home with shopping, I carry the shopping. I don't even call, it call workers. I carry the shop into the house. Even if it doesn't mean much to her, I have to pretend to be participating <laughs> in shopping. Because love is kind. You know, at home, I'm not Dr. Kenya Jui. When I go home, my kids don't care that I'm in a suit. They come jumping at me. And people are more important than suits. These things can be taken to the dry cleaner. But if you keep blocking them for your suits not to crease, then you keep losing people. Number three, love is? It does not? Envy. Love does not envy. That means I celebrate in the success of my partner. Read with me again, number four. It is not proud. If you ever sit with a mentor who tells you for two hours about his own achievements, swap him up for a mentor who focuses on you. Truth is about home. Don't just celebrate about one individual. Even if you've done it as an individual, you must let your spouse know of what you have jointly done together. Let it be a joint effort or seem to be a joint effort because indeed it is. Let's read together number five. It does not dishonor others, meaning it honors others. It honors the spouse. That is to speak in high regard. Number six. It's not self-seeking. That means seeking the interest of the other person. Whether it's about bed matters, 
whether it's about career development, the interest of the other person comes first. Philippians 2, 3. Consider others better than yourselves. Look at your neighbor, tell them, you're better than I. You're better than I. That's the spirit in the scriptures. Number seven. It's not easily. That means it can be angered. God gets annoyed. He gets angry. It, and he created us in his own image. But he goes to tell us, don't let the sun go down when you're still angry. Number eight. Don't remind your husband where he failed last year. How he did not do shopping during Christmas for your mother. You know, women, a lot of them have a blessed memory, which is biased towards remembering only the wrongs. I encourage you, find a way of deleting that record of wrongs. Number nine. Rejoices with the truth. Oh, I always knew you're going to fail. That's rejoicing with evil. <laughs> but love rejoices with the truth. It is celebrates when you succeed. Uh, number 10 together. Now, I decided to put the word always in bold. Always. Not sometime. If you ever suspect my master with anything, don't ever make a mistake of telling me. You'll embarrass yourself. Because I've not commissioned you or anyone who will ever be born to be my reporter. I understood something about marriage long ago. Always protects. If you have a caught her in the wrong origin and you come to me, I'll actually accuse you of doing what you're telling me. <laughs> and I urge you to have the same spirit. Why do you have people reporting to you about your partner? How can they have the audacity to tell you? You have opened an unnecessary window. Number 11, all is trust. Not just in church, not just Christmas. Not just when you're in happy mood. Not just when you have received a payment from your client. Always trust. Number 12. Always hope. There will be a better tomorrow. We don't have cash right now, but we're going to get it by August, by December. In two years' time, there will be breakthrough. You're always hoping things are going to be better. Things are going to improve. That's love. Where there is last, you want everything attended right now with a sense of urgency. Where there is true love, you'll always hope for a better tomorrow together. And that's why some of the most stable relationships on the face of the earth are people who started together early, struggled together, not somebody who made things already worked out. At whatever stage you come together, it can work. It doesn't matter. So long as these principles are clear, always persevere. That's why things will not always work out the way you want. Number 14 and the last one, and the most important. Who in this live audience knows where I got this from? This is not my original. Who can tell? First Corinthians? 13. Now look at the screen. This is verse 4. All the way to that full stop. And this is verse 5. That's why I wrote it. Verse 6 starts there. Verse 7 there. Verse 8 starts with those words. Love never fails. How come love never fails? That's the question before us. How come love never fails? Now look at this. God tells something dangerous to Hosea the prophet. Bring her back, even though she's adulteress. How can God tell a holy prophet to stay with a woman who is an adulteress? How can someone love like this? But God had already demonstrated it in the past. Rahab was a prostitute. She's in the lineage of the master. Because she just believed in God's word by hiding her servants when they went to spy the land. So God believes in people that you reject. I don't know how many of you in this live audience, if you met me at Koinange Street being kissed, entertained with kisses on the feet, how many would ever come for this meeting again? But once such a woman 2,000 years ago was kissing the master because he did not have a mask that we like wearing. And he thought if this man was a prophet, he should have known this woman is a prostitute. He annoyed them all the more by going to the person who had stolen than the rest, Zacchaeus. And then they said, if this man was a prophet, he should have known that this guy is a crook. He has stolen from all of us. But Jesus then answered, this is the reason why I came. I didn't come for the whole. I came for the sick. That's the reason the physician came. And that's the essence of Sense 101 Life Club. Here we don't judge anyone. We are people of different faiths. I teach God's word in the marketplace because everyone belongs to God's kingdom. Some of you have not hearkened to his call, and I'll continually call you 
to him. But one thing I'll assure you, in this place we will never judge you. Whether you respond to Christ as Savior and Lord or not, we'll continue welcoming you. Whether you are Muslim, whether you are an atheist, love message is God's message. How can someone love like that? I'll tell you how. What does it really mean, love never fails? I want to show you from scriptures. Can we read together this verse? Now, look at this. Open your eyes if you can. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is? Does God feel? God does not feel and God is love. So God never feels, so love never feels for love is God and God is love. This is the only noun where it's equated with God. We have many attributes for God, but none of the, God is the Prince of Peace, for example. He's eternal. Many attributes, but one thing goes out God. God is love. In fact, there are many texts. Maybe I could only pull two. So we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. That's why love is God. I don't know how to love without God. And if you've been trying to love or you've struggled to love for so long, until you find Christ fully in you, you will struggle to love. For you do not have love within you. For Christ is love and love is Christ. That is his name. Love is his name.